Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. I found a broken archetype in Bright Lights Draft. Let's talk about Teclo Leveler Dash. During this video, I'm going to talk about five major points of playing Teclo Leveler Dash. Number one is the pros of playing Teclo Leveler Dash. Number two is the cons and the downfalls. Our third thing to talk about is our item breakdown and which ones you're looking for and how many of them you want. The fourth thing we'll talk about will be our blues, how many you're looking for and which ones are good. And the last thing we'll talk about will be our attacks. The first and most obvious pro of playing Dash over any of the other heroes in Bright Lights Draft is the ability to play items off the top of your deck. Now you can play items offensively or defensively, that's the beauty of it. If you have quite a few defensive items, people are less likely to play around those as most people are only playing around Boom Grenade off the top of the deck. Another pro to playing Leveler Dash is that we get more than just the blocking value out of our Evos. Evo Cogspitter is one of the the best evos that you can play in leveler dash the fact that evo cogspitter costs zero lets us put an item from our hand into play and still blocks for two and we have to have it is absolutely insane another pro of playing leveler dash is that it kind of leaves you open to pivot between heroes if you want to if the first pick of your draft is an evo based century arms and the second pick of your draft is a red mini force field, then you're both open to playing Teclo Vossen or Dash at this point. It is a huge advantage to be able to pivot heroes later in a draft than everyone else sitting at the table with you. Next, let's talk about the cons of drafting level or Dash. One of the most convenient play lines of playing Teclo Vossen is the fact that you can block with an Evo and then scrap it and play it from your banish zone. You definitely don't get this value off of playing Dash. In Leveler Dash, most of your Evos are Blade Break for two or they don't actually block. So it's very hard to get value out of your Evos as the game is going on and you need to save them for a late game as much as possible. The biggest downfall of playing Leveler Dash that I found is that if Teclo Vossen is able to set up more Evos before you are, their Leveler game plan just becomes that much more effective so much faster and it's really hard to crawl back into the game. My biggest piece of advice if you're playing Leveler Dash going into Teclo Vossen is to take as much tempo as early as you can. The third thing that we're going to talk about with the Leveler Dash deck is the item items. How many items do you want and which ones do you want to be playing? Leveler Dash is by nature a more defensive deck and so Dissolving Shield and Red Mini Force Field are going to be the cards that you're going to lean on the most. With that in mind, I did go 3-0 in one draft by having one Red Boom Grenade in my deck which gave me a lot of value. Red Dissolving Shield is a zero cost item that basically blocks for three or helps cover breakpoints in some awkward situations. Red Dissolving Shield is also great off the top of your deck because it gives you the ability to pitch a red for the late game and still put a defensive card into play. Red mini force field is by far my favorite item to play in leveler dash. If you play a red mini force field at the end of your turn, your opponent's turn is looking a lot sadder all of a sudden. The four life and potential on hit effect that mini force field can save you can honestly give you enough tempo to play out an evo and still arsenal a card if you want to. The other item that I found to honestly be a powerhouse is security script. Security script is a one cost item at blue that makes all of your mechanologist attack actions block for one more. When you see the look of defeat on your max opponent's face when you play a blue security script off the top of your deck, Heck? you'll understand what I'm talking about. Security script also helps us fit our blue ratio while still having the value of playing in the Dash's hero ability. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is our blue count. How many do you want and which blues are you looking to play? I have played as few as nine blues in a leveler Dash deck and as many as 13 in one deck. I can honestly say that even though I went 2-1 with only nine blues in my leveler Dash deck, I feel like that's really pushing it. I would say that the consistent minimum you you want to have as far as blues are concerned in your deck is 10. I would also say don't play any more than 14 blues in your deck. 14 blues is already a lot and can really dilute the power level of your deck. Now I understand that this is a deck that's based off consistency and the more blues you have the more consistent your draws are going to be but trust me you're going to want a way to close games. 
The last big ticket item that I have to go over is our attacks. Now, when I say attacks, I'm obviously talking about red cards. I'm not going to sit here and say exactly how many attacks you need to have in your deck because your attacks are designed to fill out the rest of your deck and help you apply pressure when you need to. There are a lot of really good red attacks in this set, so let's talk about which ones can benefit you the most. The first two that really come to mind are Red Underloop and Red Overloop. Both of these cards almost demand to be blocked, especially since you are trying to run your opponent out of cards sometimes. Other good attacks that also fit into the deck are Red Junkyard Dog and Red Hydraulic Press. These are great attacks that apply a lot of pressure and use the scrap mechanic well. It's also worth noting that pitch stacking a Red Hydraulic Press is a fantastic way to end the game. All in all guys, I would say that Playing level or dash gives you the ability to stay open and offers a great draft experience that you might not get from any other archetype, really. I've drafted the level or dash deck four times now, and the very first time I played it, I went one and two, followed into two two ones, and a three and zero on my very last try at it. My one and two on the deck was due to two things. One, my experience in trying to figure out the deck and how it plays, and two, the idea that I drafted 12 items and that is way too many for a defensive style deck. If you think Level or Dash sounds like fun, try it at your next draft and let me know how it goes. If you like the video, guys, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.